Here we have a frame of uh, mainly obsidian, paleo spear points and knives, including a beautiful round-based Clovis point that I'll enjoy sharing with you momentarily. Um, these are obsidian uh, points and blades from Northern California, Oregon, and Washington mainly. And uh, let's start with the, uh, with the Humboldt right in front of us here. We have a Humboldt knife. This is quite a large Humboldt knife. And I acquired this from Rod Michael some years ago. Uh, he and Tony Hardy had a, had a uh, artifact shop called BC Artifacts. And uh, I acquired this from them at that time. That's probably, I think, just about six inch Humboldt knife. A real nice obsidian knife. No, it's five and a quarter inch. A little over five and a quarter inch. Here we have a really nice hasket point. Now this is made out of um, yellow jasper, as you can see. Got a little probably impact fracture there and a little bit of re-tipping in ancient times. But a very nice hasket point that was definitely used and probably just had one major repair resharpening there. In yellow jasper. Here we have your textbook type hasket point. In obsidian. Probably half inch to an inch longer at one time. Maybe inch, inch and a half longer. Resharpened down some but a textbook hasket. Uh, then we have another hasket point here. Very thin, very beautifully flaked, paleo, large paleo flaking scars. Uh, it has a little bit of what looks like possibly a snapped base or a little bit of base missing in ancient times that there's no modern damage on this, but a nice, nice little hasket beautifully thin. Then we have another hasket here. That looks pretty nasty. Looks like a hasket dart of some kind. Has a little bit of serration to it. That's very interesting. Obviously a lake find, dry lake find. This is a real nice hasket. This is a beautiful hasket that's highly translucent. Got a little bit of tip damage there from an impact, but that's ancient damage. <clears throat> There's no modern damage on that and a little bit of usage uh, flake off the edge there. But 99% of all paleo points you know, are not grade 10. Uh, they've been used. The paleo Indians that made them and used them, they just didn't normally drop them. Uh, unless they were made as offerings, but um, or cash or cash blade offerings, but uh, most ninety nine percent were used and and they uh, exhibit usage wear, and um, so that's what we can expect uh, for paleo points and any any type of spear point. But this is beautifully flaked and just wonderful uh, translucent obsidian and a real nice hasket point. And then we have a nice little hasket dart there. That's a cool little dart. Big broad paleo strikes. And then we have, this is a beautiful point I acquired from Rod Michael some years ago. It's made out of beautiful translucent obsidian and it's beautifully, beautifully ribbon flaked. It, it's just got beautiful fl ribbon type flaking all throughout this piece. Uh, it, it looks like a cascade point, but just outstanding workmanship and in beautiful material. And uh, it's an X Val Val Deviate uh, piece. I, I'm sure it's probably pictured in Lars Holtham book. It's got a little flea bite off the base there, but it looks like an ancient, it's ancient. There's, there's no modern damage to this, but just an outstanding translucent point. 
this would be a little bit more modern, the early archaic, no doubt. The rest of these being paleo. Now here we have an interesting piece, a Windes knife. And it has a matted, matted surface on this side, I believe, and yes, and the glossy surface. So we, oftentimes on lake finds, dry lake beds, different places in the desert, you'll see this sheen on one side where the wind's blown it and, and shined it up. And then this side is more of the matted side. And uh, I got this from Rod Michael, and he described it as a wind dust knife. And Bill Jackson papered it as a wind dust knife. Uh, this is an interesting piece. Uh, the base was uh, damaged in ancient time, no doubt. Uh, absolutely was. And uh, then they may have continued to use it as a knife. Or I believe at that time, uh, we have a, what we have here with this, the eye right here. We have a mammoth now facing right, okay? This is a story stone effigy. <clears throat> I discovered uh, these face and mammoth effigies <clears throat> back in October of 2020. <clears throat> and this is one of them with this eye here of the mammoth facing off to the right, which is also the eye of a face now looking off to the left and then the hair etched above. There's a lot of etching on this piece. It's not from, it's not flaking ripples from uh, flaking. It's actual etching. When you examine it with a 10 power loop, you don't even need to do that when you get used to looking at it, but you see individual etching lines that are grooved actually into the surfaces. Now they're worn some because of just being 12,000 years old, but, um, and then we have faces on this as well. Uh, it's just, we have a lot of etching right there. We, th this is a beautifully etched piece and uh, some really good mammoth imagery. And that's why, why they contoured this base after it broke, just to make it into an effigy so they could leave it as an offering. And that was left as an offering, which, which is what I call a story stone face and mammoth effigy. So it's a pretty cool piece. I got that from Rod Michael. Uh, as I mentioned some years ago. Here <clears throat> is an outstanding round base fluted Clovis point. This is truly an outstanding piece. This is five and a quarter inches long and was found in the eastern, uh, southeastern Oregon, uh, northwestern Nevada area. It's, it's fluted just about two inches. One and seven eighths is the flute. And it's a deep, meaningful flute it's not, a, it's not shallow, really. And then it's been flaked on both sides. Now, on both sides, it has it has two faces here. One, this has been flaked as an eye intentionally right here. This has also been flaked as an eye right there. Here we have the nose. So they contoured the base just a little bit to make it the face uh, profile. And then we have this right here flaked intentionally right there as the mouth. So we have the eye, the nose, and the mouth of the face with the upper eye. And then we come down here and see that little eye right there and nose and mouth. So we have the older face above and the younger face below looking off to the right. And then when we look at it this way, now we have another face over here. And we have um, this, the eye right here. And then the nose and then the mouth has been flaked right there. Right there, that chip right there. They did that intentionally for the mouth. And then you can see there's some etching on this for the hair above this eye, kind of an eyebrow. There's the same here. There's etching right here for the eyebrow above that eye. And there's a lot of etching on this piece right here. That's some good etching right there. But there's etching all over the piece. The etching, as we know, is for depicting the hair on the faces, on the head of the faces, and also the hair of the mammoth. Because each story stone has two faces, one young and one old, and two mammoth images, one young and one old. Now, when we hold it this way, oh my, we see some other great imagery here as well. And uh, this is the eye of the face right here that was intentionally put in there at the last. There's the nose and the open mouth down here with that flake down there. So we have that eye, hook, nose, and mouth of a face looking off now to the right. Eye, nose, and mouth, that flaking scar. Now looking off to the right. Now we have a cool face with this, the eye, the nose, and the open mouth down here, looking off to the left. That's the open mouth down there, that flaking scar. So we have the eye, 
the nose and the mouth looking off. That's the eye right there. And then we have the hair all around the eye there etched. All oh, that's etched. Oh, this is etched. This is an outstanding five and a quarter. There's a great face, eye, nose, and mouth right there looking off to the left now. Now one looking off to the right with a hooked nose. Unbelievable, the workmanship, the creativity on this. Uh, this was truly a prized piece. It was made as a spear point because the edges, the base, the base of it is ground. And as Dr. Michael Gramley has discovered, that Clovis did grind all of their spear points. Uh, but when it come to knives, no, the Clovis people did not grind knives. So if they made them as knives, it would not be ground. Made as a spear point, it would be. Now it could be ground as a knife if at some time during its usage, it needed to be used as a point. Then they could grind the edges of the knife to use it as a point. But this was used as a spear point, probably about an inch or so longer at one time, maybe an inch and a half. It's five and a quarter inches now with a one and seven eighths inch flute, heavily etched, beautifully weathered. I mean, it's very well weathered point, a very well weathered point. And, and still you can see the etching pretty clearly from underneath all that weathering. Just an outstanding Clovis story stone Face and mammoth, fluted, face and mammoth effigy. This is a round base Clovis, and we're, we're finding more and more round base Clovises. And then we have this Cougar Mountain here, this Cougar Mountain here. These are nice points. And then we have another um, wind dust here. And this is an interesting point. This is uh, plated and pictured in Lars Holtham. Uh, paleo uh, points and knives book uh, it's fluted and it's got meaningful dual fluting there now when we think of fluting like that we think of interline fluting or we think basically clovis so i believe this to be a late stage late uh, in the uh, late in the uh, complex late late in the time zone uh, transitional clovis type dart with that parallel flaking and made with just beautiful obsidian it's got a little old impact tip damage, nothing modern. This is X Val Valdivia and part of the Michael Huff collection. What an outstanding, look at that flaking. Unreal. Wow, fluted. Mm. And then we have here an agate basin point. These Cougar Mountains are nice and I'll just show this one off for a little bit because it's translucent nicely done so a frame of far western paleo clovis uh, points and knives